Hello and welcome to part three of how to make my crochet peg bag. Um, I've stopped here, I'm about three stitches away from where I actually want to change over my colour. But at this point, what I'm going to do is turn over my bag, so that because this is my front of my bag. And what we need to do is we need to find the centre point, because from this point onwards, we're actually going to be building up the sides of the bag. And we want to leave that gap in the middle. So I'm just going to get my darning needle and just go, and say, I think that's about the middle. Right, it probably isn't, but now I can check, okay? So I'll count my stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. And from this side, just you just do the first stitch that you can see, not round the corner. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Oh, I was one away. Okay. So now I know that that's my 20th stitch. Now on my other one, um, I actually left four stitches in between because of the way that the stitches fell. But this time round, I've got, because of the way that it's all sat, I've actually got a 20th stitch right in the centre, I'm actually going to leave five. So depending on how yours has fallen, because if you've ended up that you've got a 20th stitch there and a 20th stitch there, you can use that as your centre point, okay? And I'm just going to use a um, cut off bit of my blue cotton to mark the areas where I want my stitches to, well, where I'm not going to stitch, so let's say it that way. So that's my centre, so I'm going to have two stitches each side so I'm going to go into there and I'm just going to gently pull that through that side and then I'm going to count one two stitches that side whoops put my yarn through there I'm doing it really gently because these stitches are not actually going to be used I'll take my needle out and so that's just going that's just going to sit there for the rest of the time while I work it shouldn't come undone okay and then what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to pr proceed with the next point so I've um, got my flower there <laughs> right so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to my single crochet in the next in my next three I think so that's I'm just making sure that I'm as I'm on the same sort of level as where I actually changed over last time I'm slightly round the back but I prefer to be around the back rather than be too close to the front. So I'm going to do one more stitch there in the white. And then the same again, what I did last time, I'm going to get my, to let my white yarn go. Oh, I want my purple yarn to be over the top. There, and I want my purple yarn and my lilac yarn to come down the front. I'm holding that with my finger there. And I'm just going to get my tension. I'm just going to literally single crochet into the next space. I'm just going to do a couple of stitches. Oh, uh, <laughs> this was in the centre of the other one. Um, just do a couple of stitches before I actually cut off the white yarn. Just so that I know that I'm happy that it's not going anywhere. And get my white yarn. I, I always leave a... Um, my tail end, <laughs> I always say to leave a long tail. Somebody actually, um, I'm sure I read it, I can't remember when I read it, commented about, um, I don't know whether it was in my Etsy or whether it was actually on my YouTube, about how long were these tail ends of yarn. And I would say that they, I, say I normally do a couple of hooks, hooks long, so they're normally somewhere between 10 and 12 inches, but I must admit, I've left my purple one a little short this time. But anyway, this is where your magic's going to begin. So you're going to actually keep, because you're working from this point onwards, you're going to, I just want to pull that a bit tighter. You're going to keep these nice horizontal lines now, because what you're going to do is you're going to work up to our marking points we're not going to work in the same stitches as them because then we just risk getting tangled up with our yarn um, 
and you I mean if you haven't got if you don't want to do it with your with yarn to mark it you can use those special little marker things but um I've always been happy marking my work with pieces of yarn so I've never actually bought any of those marker things um not that they seem to be expensive or anything I just didn't feel the need that I needed them but what we're going to do lot is when we get to this point here I'm nearly there, nearly there. <laughs> now I'm going to just work into there. And now I'm going to chain one and turn. Okay. I know this is a bit weird. <laughs> but, so, but what's going to happen is that you're going to make sure you do a nice stitch there. I've done mine a bit loose. I want to keep my chain nice and tight. So it, as I turn the corner, it keeps a nice neat edge up the front. Yeah, that's better. And we just what we're going to do now is is work all the way back to the other side um, where we've got our marker stitch there that side there. I'm just going to go keep going backwards and forwards now, and you'll and what will happen is like now because if I go if I count that I've got two two rows there already, even though. It's not really a proper row. And that is the correct that is correct for you the way that you're going to count it. So you're always going to count from here on both of your pieces of work to make sure you've got the correct amount. And all you do is literally just go all the way back round, backwards and forwards. So for those of you that have got the gist of what I'm saying, um do hope that you're actually having a go and that you actually are making yourself a peg bag um, I do recommend that you do make one for yourself because say as crocheters we tend to give all of our work away I know some people do sell it I've been asked if I sell my stuff and um, I have but I have thought about it but I thought if I sell my actual finished items as well then that's it's more involved i've got to make sure that i've got those times where i can go back to the post office and post parcels on a regular basis and um trying to you see because it was only in january this year they actually decided that i was just going to just crochet for a job and to make my videos and sell my patterns and that i would somehow <laughs> somehow survive on it um and then i don't know it's weird because i, I used to be in such a routine with my cake toppers of i used to make cake toppers on certain days i used to have certain days that i used to go and post and I used to go to the post office twice a week and uh now because i'm doing something completely different and doing these recordings it's it's very different to get into you don't i don't have the same sort of routine and um i can only record when the children are at school well that's not technically true i can actually record when they're at home and i know that they'll be as good as gold did you know when somebody else is there in the background it's like you're conscious of that and um I don't know it I always think well, oh no what if they need me for something and I know I shouldn't that the teenagers and they're perfectly fine um but that's just me bit of a whittle bum sometimes but I I like to be there for them if they need me so and if I was doing a recording and then something happened I know that they would also be upset that they've actually interrupted my my work because it's like this if I got interrupted now I can't undo this work and start this bit again without you actually, it would, well if it did look, if I undid it now, you can see, my stitches are baggier because you can see where I've already been, so um, you've actually got to <laughs> go further back and um, redo your work, and it's like now, I actually started recording at quarter past eleven this morning, when I started on that little blue bit at the bottom and did my first video then I went off I, I crocheted that all of the blue then I came back I made another 
I think I made another 20 minute video of me waffling about Facebook and stupid stuff. I'm really sorry about that, by the way. I just, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I had one of my moments. Um, and then I say I, I finished the, I, I, should, I did that one. And then I went off and I've crocheted again to do all the white. And I've got just enough time to be able to do this part of this video and show you how this works. And then that's it. I have, I've got no more recording time left. I need to tidy up and make sure that my kitchen looks like a kitchen. And um, not this bizarre layout that I have all set up for me to be able to record in. And, um, and so that when the children come home, they can have a nice tea. Right, now, um, I'm at this point now. This is, this is my, my opposite side. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain one turn oh these colors look fabulous together don't they wow I do you like this this purple beautiful sorry distracted a little moment there um and now so now i'm going to single crochet all the way back or double crochet if you're in the uk and what you're going to do you see as you go backwards now we've done this second point there you can see they're both the same height and so by stopping and starting your rows here, because you can see that that's dropped down. I don't know if you can see that. You can see the, the height difference of like the dropping down thing that's going off as you're going around in a circle. By changing there, it keeps those horizontal lines so nice and neat. And I like my stripes to be neat. I like, I, I, you say when I try to do other things, you, you end up, you go around in a spiral and you can actually, you work, you can see that spiral effect and you can see that it's sort of going up at an angle. Whereas this, this actually does really look like you've actually gone backwards and forwards and done lots of nice, neat rows. So um, it's just, let's say, one of those things that I noticed um, a while ago, it's, it's very strange. Ever since I learned how to crochet, um, it fascinated me. It fascinated me the way that you could, the way that the the whole stitch actually worked. Um, and I don't know why, because I because I I used to knit. I wasn't very good at it, but I mean I could follow a pattern um, and make toys and things like that. But I never found. I never had the same sort of pleasure that. I get out of crochet it just it was never ever there when I was knitting and so once I learned how to crochet it just it did it captivated me in such a way that um I don't know I hadn't even been crocheting for a year before I started to write my own patterns because I start out I, I don't know I just thought that like oh yeah the, you know I can I can find this or that on the internet and I'd go and have a look for a pattern and then like oh okay then well, I've got this idea. I wonder if it'll work. So I, I began experimenting. And I and I have to say, <laughs> you know, my first crochet patterns that I wrote are really naff. Um, when I look back at them and I think, oh, okay, that's a bit confusing. Or, yeah, okay, that didn't make proper sense there. But it, it doesn't matter because by looking back at what I did, it shows me how much I've actually improved. And so those patterns are still valuable to me because... Um, I did that. I mean, it's like I was I was rummaging through my little box the other day, and I found some notes on how to make a rose, um, which I'm sure it was just a free pattern that I got. It's not my own design. And when I actually went to crochet it, it, it the actual word said small rose. So I thought it was going to be small, and it turned out a lot bigger than I expected. Um, and it just just made me smile I don't know it's just like going back down memory lane sometimes it's just really really nice to see how much I've improved from when I very first learned so I'm gonna I'm just gonna make it all the way back around to the other side and show you that you'll see again because what's what you're going to do is you're going to be able to count your rows in twos this time so we're coming back to the beginning point yeah whoop we're nearly there. <laughs> I know sometimes it um, takes a little bit longer than I think, but we're nearly there. 
So now as I uh, cross over to this point, I, woo, I can see that this is now going to change into my third row here. But it's only really, <laughs> it's only, I don't know, it's not even, it's like half, it's not even half a row, it's like a quarter of a row to be able to make this work, to be able to keep these horizontal, um, horizontal lines properly. So, um, I think it will come in handy, you know, if, for other people, for other people that do actually write patterns that come along and watch my videos, because I'm I'm just as bad. I go and watch other crocheters, you know, on, on um, YouTube. I still love watching them and, and learning them. And um, I've, I've got a kind of an obsession, I suppose, a bit with watching people in different countries because... Um, I don't know it's, it's just beautiful it's beautiful to see other people's ideas and their designs and the color uses that, that they you know the combinations that they use together because different places that they have like I don't know it's whether it's because of the temperature or or because of their personalities they just have some like amazing designs so now if I just stop at this point just so that you can see you can now see that this side is actually taller than this side. But I'm, when I'm, I'm also, when I work back, this is obviously going to get higher. But then when I get to there, I've got to go back and keep. So you're going to sort of going up in two steps there and up two steps that side. But you're just going backwards and forwards. You're not really. And saying, and this, this is still going to be the changing point here. And also, because what? Because by rights, from from now onwards. You should be fine um, with it, you know, if you, you want to keep the same colour yarn all the way through, you won't you've even have to have do any changes of colour. Um, if you have been changing your colours, then now you know how I do it. And if you're not happy with that way, then obviously you can go and watch somebody else on YouTube or you can do it your own way. That's entirely up to you. But what I'm going to do is, is because of the way I finish... And you actually finish and you fasten off your yarn. You don't try and sew the top together as all in one go because you'll end up with it being wonky. So I'm going to give you some top tips in the next video of how to actually keep everything together so that you, when you actually sew it, to, when you actually fasten the top piece across, this still keeps, this area here is still going to keep a nice straight neat line. So I'll show you how to do that. And... When we're at that point that's just going to be the last bit of the video isn't it so that's going to be part four showing you the final stages of the um of finishing off i think what i'll do as well is i will sew in my ends down the sides so that i can show you a really nice finished piece of work with my color combination choices this time do like them they're very nice whoops we got stuck um yeah so where are we we're well, another 20 minutes already it just whizzes by but yeah so anyway let's just say quick final wrap up of this so that we've got some idea of how long all of this is taking so each row each band of color of 10 rows is taking roughly an hour to crochet so it's about five hours worth of work and I've already done two crochet bags so I've spent 10 hours minimum on those ones 11 12 I mean it's what is it? it's five past three now so if I so 11 12 1 2 3 so I've actually four hours today I've like I've had recording and crochet record a crochet and that's all I've done today Oh, and I have had a cup of coffee, by the way, <laughs> while well, I've sat in the sunshine, been very nice. And, um, yeah, so, I, I don't know, I'm just saying that, I suppose, realistically, because, I mean, I don't, you, you don't even have to keep this bit in anymore now, we're finished with that bit. That's all done, that's, we've ended that. But, yeah, so, um, I was just let, letting you know, because I, I want you to understand how long it's going to take for you to actually make up your work to be able to do it so it's like if we was going to price this one up because i'm going to do this it's all right it's my anniversary video i'm going to give you every bit of information i possibly can so let's just say um 
for argument's sake we're on 10 pound an hour and it's took five hours to make the bag uh, so that's 50 pounds it cost us what was it two pounds something a bottle which type was it to say it's going to be so it's two four six and the other it says seven pounds on water so that's 57 pounds um, the coat hanger was free, so uh, we'll have to let that one go because we recycled. But, as I said, is, is the, the value of your bag is actually a lot more than anybody would think about. So, when it comes to you know, like your crochet bag that you've got hanging up and it's beautiful and you can peg out your washing and everything else and you can really look at it in pride. If you're going to make it for anybody else... Um, they, they're, they're never going to realise and appreciate actually that you've given them such an actually an expensive gift okay so uh, I don't know I might try and put one up for sale and see if I can get that money for it <laughs> it's like is someone going to pay £57 for my peg bag the most expensive peg bag in the world <laughs> anyway <laughs> um, before I completely lose the plot I think maybe the sun's getting to me as well do I look a bit browner maybe maybe not I don't know anyway I've definitely gone over my 20 minutes so i'm going to love you and leave you um it'll probably be miserable and cloudy and raining and everything tomorrow but that tomorrow is going to be because i'm going to finish off my top section and tomorrow i'm going to come back and i'm going to show you how to finish it all off and um and then once i've done that i'm going to know say tomorrow but then when i actually upload all the videos that they all get uploaded on the same day so but I'm trying to explain so that you know and understand how long it actually takes just to make. Uh, let's see, this video This video is 20 minutes, the other one was 20 minutes. So, so far I've got an hour's worth of recording. Probably do another 20 minutes on my other one. So an hour and 20 minutes worth of recording is going to have taken me two days. Yeah, it's bizarre, isn't it? But anyway, let's just put the flower on there. Oh, look, colours look beautiful together, don't they? I'm going to have to improve on that. I don't know what I did there. It's going to be wonky, but... Anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for liking. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for all my lovely comments, for people that are buying my patterns from me, for those that... All of you that come, you know, really watching in my videos. I really do appreciate all of your support. I never, ever, ever expected to do this as a job. <laughs> it really, really didn't. Um never in my wildest dreams so it's bizarre it's lovely and i can't believe that a whole year's gone by since i actually first published um my uh, my own work like this so thanks guys i appreciate it bye for now <laughs>